We live in a world where environments often compete. Some environments are natural, while others seem to work against nature. What if they could work together, even in a small way? Passive solar design is one way to contribute to a more planet-friendly lifestyle while coexisting with the urban world. Hi, uh, I'm Brent Swain with Sustainable Architecture, and um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, passive solar and different ways, different strategies for trying to reduce heat consumption in buildings. And uh, today uh, we're going to talk about the, uh, the David Wedge House as, as an example. Uh, the passive solar uh, design can be illustrated very, very simply uh, as, as a way of, of trying to reduce the overall heating and cooling load of the house by uh, sheltering the house from the summer sun and allowing winter sun in. And uh, passive solar actually captures the heat and uses it for heating purposes. And that makes a big impact because fossil fuels are expensive and they're going to get only more so as time goes on, probably in a geometric uh, progression. Uh, so what, what we're looking at is, um, this is a wintertime uh, image of a home that's designed for Clarksdale, Mississippi. And I've, I've got some cutouts in the roof with, with trellis work that allow the sun to actually hit those windows during, during the wintertime. And uh, the tile on the floor is going to capture that heat. And, and heat that home. I also have some clear story windows up high that are going to allow that same sunlight to the rear of the of the floor plan and it's going to heat those floors as well. Um, so it's going to distribute light and heat evenly throughout the house and as I said that will help you during the summertime too by reducing your peak load and moving it to the to the evening time when when the sun is going down. So passive solar heating is, is uh, something you can achieve easily. Now we're going to show you the uh, the summer solstice and uh, that's in uh, June 21st. And you're gonna see that uh, there is no sun hitting the walls at all. As a matter of fact, you've actually got additional areas of the patio that are sheltered from the sun. So you can sit out there on your lawn chair in the shade. Uh, and it's the same house, it's just two different times of the year. That's passive solar. It's a sun space, which is designed specifically to try to save energy and uh, to reduce your utilities. And it does it really well in this case because it is a west-facing sunroom and previously as from noon on during the summertime it was baking the west wall of their house creating a lot of heat during the summertime and we're in Mississippi so as you can imagine that's that's an issue well we created this buffer zone that does allow heat and light in and it's naturally heated and cooled because the tile floor can absorb that heat and keep it from getting airborne so it's a thousand square feet of tile on concrete and that really does a lot to absorb any, any sunlight during the winter. And another, another feature that helps a lot is if you'll look up at the eaves and how deep they are, that they're able to shelter the sun, uh, keep it off the windows um, to some extent, especially when you combine them with this, tr this shade tree here. And it keeps a lot of the uh, direct sunlight during the summertime out of, of the home. You can see the shadow line on the ground right now. This is a shadow line uh, at 11 o'clock. Uh, during uh, April. So um, what's going to happen is that that sunlight's going to creep up that wall as the day goes on. But like I said, that'll, most of that heat will get absorbed in the tile on the inside of the home. So that's the concept and that's called a sun space. And it's basically a free room that, not a free room, but a room that pays for itself over time and uh, with your utility savings. They added a thousand square feet to their home and their utility bills for the overall home went down as a result. Uh, you know, homes uh, basically consume as much as 60% of our fossil fuels. And uh, some people say 40, some people say 50. But I, I think, it, you know, the estimates are, are unclear, but it's in the range of around 50 to 60%. And, if, and, and the other thing that's interesting about it is that it's primarily consumption of fossil fuels through large grid access like electric, electric generation so that small changes we make um, on, on a large scale, like if everyone designed their home a certain way, those are small changes everyone makes, but they would have a very large reaching impact on society uh, and allow people to put our money into, you know, so the same things that are true individually for our home, the little sacrifices we make on our own home, the same thing is true for society, where a couple of small sacrifices individually we make can benefit society as a whole on a grand scale. 